Hello friends and welcome. Today we're going to be watching an Undying game. This is Liquid vs. Tundra group stage. I don't know if it's the best Undying game like played so far, but we're just going to look at good supports played by good teams and talk about what they're doing. Uh, and so let me know if there's a heroes, players, specific games you guys want me to cover uh, going forward. So first off, uh, Undying, really strong hero right now. You pretty much always go even or win your lane, uh, which is really good in pub since uh, many carries play, pick uh, really weak uh, carries that scale well. It's like, oh, so cool, right? Uh, in this case, they got Medusa, which is not that weak, but on the, you know, she's not like gonna get kills. That's fine. You're gonna secure her a lane and kind of go from there. So that's really good to do with Undying. Uh, they smoked out, placed an Observer Ward. This is not something you have to do in so many of your pub games. Uh, going for like a first blood group movement is good. Smoke up to you in pub games. You can kind of rely on people being discoordinated. Uh, in this case, he was placing this Observer, one, for this first blood attempt, potentially, uh, but two, Enchantress roaming between lanes, uh, very common in the pro scene, again, pub scene, maybe you don't need that kind of Observer, you can place it more in your lane, uh, but here, it's helpful to them, it does get spotted out, because actually, Tundra did something very similar, placed an Observer first, so they saw Undying do that, that's fine. Uh, for your starting items, Blood Grenade combos really well with the slow from the zombies on Tombstone. Uh, so you're going to spam out Decay, eventually you decide to go. Tombstone plus Blood Grenade, so I really recommend that. Uh, two spam out spells, you want a Mango, uh, at least one, but really you're going to buy more. And in fact, he's going to buy two more with the starting gold. And then the Stick, if the enemy uses spells at all, Stick can be really good to get mana back from uh, their spell cast so that you can then spam out Decay. Sentries, this is more of a pro thing. Uh, you don't want the enemy to pull. You beat most people in lane. This is the lane he's going to do well in, Doom, Shadow Demon. So the only thing they can do is try to disrupt Equilibrium by pulling. Bonus value because Doom uh, eats creeps, right? So by blocking this hard camp, he kind of... Uh, removes that possibility of the enemy pulling camps and Doom getting a good creep. And potentially he can unblock his small camp if he wants, but you don't really want to pull as Undying. You're going to notice he tries to play the lane a lot. You want to mess with the enemies, get a lot of decays, and with your higher damage, because you're getting strength and they're losing strength, uh, you just deny creep. So you maintain equilibrium that way. So you see he starts with a decay on 33, and equilibrium is kind of like, okay, so he's just messing with Snake King. He's going to go ahead and drop a sentry to block the camp. You could try to body block it at one minute, but there's always a chance something happens. Who knows? Uh, Snaking might disrupt him with uh, this spell. I mean, he used it now, but like, you're, oh, quick, quick walk into the box in 58 seconds, you get disrupted, you don't get there in time. So he's going to put one preemptively. If Snaking has a sentry, which he actually uh, does, but he actually placed it over here, then uh, Undying could go ahead and place his second sentry. So he's already prepared for this, sees his small camp is blocked, so he has lots of information on this. But Equilibrium is still in a pretty good spot for his team, so he is fine right now. Goes for the Decay on uh, Doom, but actually happens to miss there. There he is buying more mangoes. So this is kind of your laning stage. You just want to like body people, go for double decays like this, and then like attack either the enemies or attack your own creeps. You see him doing it there a little bit. This is what keeps your lane here without forcing you to go to pull. So if you count the creeps here, right, the enemy has a lot more creeps than he does. So without having to do anything, the lane is in a good spot, and that allows him to stay here and keep bullying the enemy and not leave. If you leave the lane, they are so happy that, oh, thank God, and dying's gone, I'm not getting decayed for all my strength, and now I can actually play. So you want the lane to stay here as much as possible. Just spam out these decays, and then uh, this is a high-level thing. They know Doom hit level 2 and wants to devour a creep, so they see Doom walk away, and they know he's not here because it's blocked. They know it's not here because that camp's blocked, so they actually just commit on uh, Shadow Demon right here. They throw the blood grenade, and they start running at him because they know Doom walked away to go find a creep. So Snake King is forced to TP. Uh, they don't get a kill with that, but uh, you're getting teleports out of it. You're making him lose a lot of health, and if you didn't do that, uh, and then they get a kill. It did kind of cost them a little bit of equilibrium, but because of how many enemy creeps there are, it's actually still going to be okay. There's like double eight creeps here, pretty much, against four creeps. So even though they're under tower, they're doing enough damage that the whole lane is going to balance out. Uh, Insania sees this uh, D ward happening, but it's uh, it still did its job. It blocked it at two minutes, so they're good for that. And then he sees Doom coming in. Doom wants to try to grab the next creep wave because he does not want to play into this undying lane. So he's going to try to cut him off, um, start decaying so that even if he didn't have Tombstone, 33 takes a ton of damage creep dragging. And you'll see Undyings just like chase the enemy off laner all the way over here and just continue to bully them out the whole time. So sometimes you see that happening. Uh, in this case, he had a Nether Blood Grenade 
or sorry, Mickey had the blood grenade. Um, you may not get that in your pub games, but uh, you might have bought a second blood grenade on Undying. So blood grenade plus tombstone is actually going to force 33 to immediately teleport, recognizes the danger that he was not going to get out of there in time. Um, so... So he gets out, they don't get a kill, but they did stop the creep drag. The creep drag actually was still slightly successful. You see the enemy creep wave walking under the tower a little bit here. So it's going to, in the future, push this wave. That's why uh, he tries to go for this D ward. He was hoping snaking would like back off and lose vision, but he actually sees this. So he unblocks his small camp, but he knows this hard camp is actually now available. So he has to choose to body block it or go for the Lotus rune or the Lotuses at three minutes and actually chooses to go for the Lotus, which I thought was interesting. Uh, it's not like a flame. I just, I don't know what I would choose, you know, like, oh, do I block this again? Or um, is it enough? Like, have we, have we uh, done enough laning that we want one camp to spawn? And here he actually chooses it. Uh, so the Lotus is really good for uh, Undying because it's pretty much one extra free spell, or you can leave it on your carry if you want to start roaming around later. Uh, you can feel a little more confident that they have the Lotus. I think he may have felt okay about this camp spawning because of what Doom did. Because Doom brought the lane in here, they know their lane is pushing, so they need a camp to spawn. Uh, the small camp, sure, but it's a little further back. So maybe he chose, you know what, I'll let the hard camp spawn, I'll get the Lotus, and then I will pull the hard camp and then block it again, which is actually what we're going to see him do in just a little bit. Um, but uh, Snaking does try to mess with him, tries to like do these kind of pulls, try to first pull this at 317 so that the wave would be like out here at 325, and that's when uh, Insania wants to hit it to drag it over here. But Insania then interrupted that uh, interruption, so the camp reset right away. So now he gets to pull again here at 325, and he is going to get a hard camp uh, pull, which is going to be disrupted by Snaking, who's going to walk up. Uh, they're going to throw out some spells on him, and they're actually going to pick up a kill. So this is the kind of stuff that's like a hard call to make as the like four support in this case. You don't want them to get the pull because equilibrium's pretty good. And I actually think Snaking's kind of okay with that. It sucks that it's first blood, but um, they're trying to get the lane to come over here so that Doom can like play this. And if he doesn't interrupt that pull, then the lane is going to like continue to stay out here for a while and they can get pushed off of this. So I, I, I think it's like an understandable attempt and he almost got away with it, right? It was really close. Um, and then you see... He's going to block it again uh, pretty soon here. I forget where. Uh, but for in the meantime, right, he's just going to, like, mess with the, the Doom. You can see Equilibrium is starting to be, like, okay again. It's not perfect, but that's fortunately what he has another camp for. Now that he's got some downtime, he's going to kill this off. And he's going to try to do this pull here, like, as the timing works out. But uh, just a little bit off, especially with Doom coming in to mess it up. Uh, but with all of this still going on, they are, like, getting back to where they need to be. He's going to come interrupt the pull. You don't want the enemies to get this. And it's actually not as scary for Undying because you're so powerful. Uh, you can just interrupt pulls. Uh, you still have to be a little careful, guys. But uh, you, you're, you've got much more freedom than most supports do. Like Snake King tried to do it. He died. Uh, Undying tries to do it. They 2v1 you. You're like, ha double decays. Tombstone. I don't care. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's not so bad if you stop the pulls as Undying. Um, now, because this camp is blocked, this camp is dying, Medusa did their, her own pull. Uh, he knows Equilibrium is going to be in a pretty good spot for Mickey. It's the, the very start of the nighttime. He's going to go for a sneaky play and is going to immediately come over to the Twin Gate and first get bashed by Roshan. Now, I do want to mention, before he came, he got his boots from the Courier. Uh, coincidence? Maybe, but it's really good. Before you start like moving around, uh, the slower you are and you try to move around a lot, you're just, you know, it takes more time. So you get your boots first before committing to that kind of play. It helps a lot. He picked up another blood grenade. He picked up an observer. So if this dive is successful, he can then come place a deep ward, make his way back, you know, do whatever. So I think it's a really nice timing for him in terms of his own items, but also the, the lane he's leaving. And this is the hard part in pubs. My carry dies while I leave. I know, guys. It's not easy. Carry players just, like, play it safe. Medusa is a pretty tanky one of all the heroes to leave, and he even gave her the Lotus to, uh, you know, have some extra burst heal. It's, it's what you want as Undying, ideally. And actually, there's a lot of supports in this meta is to be able to roam around and hopefully draw attention away. You know, get Shadow Demon to come down here, 3v3. You get all these decays, these tombstones. It's a 1v1 up here. It's good for your carry. It's bad for their carry. That's ideal. I know it's very hard in pubs, but it is what you want to aim for. Uh, tombstone for the dive, very strong. One Tombstone uh, can possibly tank the, the tower shot a couple when you place it first. Notice this vision. It's all from Tombstone. Tombstone gives incredible vision. And and the zombies distract the creeps, slow the enemies. It's a very powerful tool. 
So that's why he initiates with it, combos with a blood grenade. They're going to pick up a drow kill here. And this is kind of the attention you want. It makes the enemy team want to go like, oh, we got to go deal with this lane. But actually now we're just laning into undying and that kind of sucks. Uh, so Insaney's going to try not to go back. Noticed he did walk down here though and has a teleport. So if he needs to, he can go back up. Doesn't get baited by that courier. I absolutely would have. Uh, Courier kills are good, but you don't want to, like, die for them. And going under the tower, pretty risky. Now, there's actually a very nice tower dive from the top. Notice he looks up, decides it's too late. I can't help by the time I TP. It just, you know, it just wouldn't be worth it. So it is unfortunate. Um, in your pub games, that is maybe where you do teleport and just try to save your carry, especially if the enemy is not uh, doing a, a very clean tower dive, which is much more likely to happen in a pub game. In this case, he realizes it's too late. I'm not even going to bother. That's a tough call to make. So just take your best judge uh, judgment of it and give it a go. He's coming here to mess with Queen of Pain. They're not really going to kill her here, but notice they're getting her low. And she doesn't have a bottle uh, charge. So even though they're not killing Queen of Pain, it's drawing attention here. And now Queen of Pain is going, guys, I'm being ganked by Undying. I need a bottle refill. Come help me, you know? And so that means the supports want to come help mid. And even if they don't, the mid can no longer gank side lanes. She has her ultimate. She would love to come kill Medusa again. She'd love to come bottom, kill them. But uh, this Undying, you know, he's he's camping me, guys. It's 2v1 mid. This is, this is your pub. This is your mid pub player. You hear it. Uh, he can't do other things. So it's a very cool play from a support, recognizing I can't get kills, but this is actually protecting the side lanes by hurting the Queen of Pain now and drawing supports into the mid lane to try to like refill her bottle or try to respond because they think we're diving her, so they TP in. That means they can't be playing the side lanes. So very cool stuff. You see him, uh, while here, place a deep ward that hopefully the enemy team didn't notice. It's a little bit of a gamble if they didn't have vision here. But based on the fact he was able to get close, he's kind of like guessing that I don't think she has an observer here right now. Going to drop this, which is going to be useful later. Does a stack uh, as he's coming through. Just general efficient movement. Uh, Boxy was getting the wisdom rune. Otherwise, that's something you might consider. And because he was already down here, he didn't go for the steal either. Uh, they they kind of come for the drow. They suspect she's like backing up a little bit. But with Nisha coming in... Uh, all things combined, like, oh, because Drow backed up, but maybe it was Enchantress seeing me. At the same time, our mid hero is committed to coming down here. So let me go ahead and drop a sentry on this cliff to make sure they don't have vision here. Because if they do, it's a little awkward, right? Your mid hero at this point could still turn around, get back to mid, or go farm something, right? Not waste his time. But if you let him continue to sit around here, like, oh, maybe she's going to show up, you know, keep waiting, keep waiting. It's just a lot of extra time. The whole time they're just watching you under this observer. So if you have a whole team movement down here in your games, it's it's worth checking for observers somewhere, either here, back here, wherever the common spot you want to check is. Um, and then they're, they're going to commit to it. And uh, here's the tombstone. Again, look, great vision from the tombstone. It's distracting the creeps. That makes the dive easier, slows the enemy. So they're going to go ahead and grab this enchantress kill and then just uh, continue to uh, push up on this tower off of that. Now, he is going to TP mid here. This is something that you have to be careful of in your games. Nisha does not have a teleport, the mid laner, right? So you don't want to teleport here if your mid is just going to go back. But because the mid laner would, at most, uh, even if he wants to come back here right away, he has to walk here. Um, there's at least one creep wave that is going to go to waste. It is a little dangerous that you won't be able to help your side lanes, but uh, his team, Zai, was getting a kill up here with Medusa, so he's feeling pretty confident, like, okay, top's going to be okay, bottom, clearly okay, we just got a kill here and took the tower. So now I come mid, I get XP. He's going to play it safe, though, not just, like, walk up. He's going to stack, he's going to get the rune, uh, stuff like that, because the teams are showing on the sides. Nisha down here with Boxy, Zai and Mickey up here. So if they see a lone undying here, maybe they go like, hey, let's kill him, you know? So he's doing other stuff, but he didn't really miss any XP. He's still like hugging the edges, just getting the XP, which is what you really care about as a support. The last hits are nice, but you don't have to get them, uh, especially if it's too risky. So uh, just getting the XP to push towards six. Uh, fortunately, his ganks were successful, but sometimes they're not. You roam and you don't get anything out of it. Then you fall under leveled. So recognizing my mid can't go back, uh, to the lane, I just need XP, right? That kind of teleport can be good. Uh, walk if you can help it. It's really good in pubs. Uh, this is a pro scene, so you know they're gonna be much more coordinated. Oh, Insania TP'd, we can't, you know, be too crazy, he can't help us. Uh, they have that benefit. As his teammates get closer, they do kind of like push up. Uh, this kind of, again, 
scaring the team. Like, hey, there's three of us here. We're messing with you. Shadow Demon got to come refill that Queen of Pain's bottle. It means the side lane's going to be a little bit safer. Uh, he's going to continue to sit here. You don't have to just, you know, go, 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 never stop, right? Think about your timings. Hey, they were doing some stacks. Uh, Io kind of close to, you know, mech. Maybe they want to farm that up. Even if I do rotate, I don't have that much mana. Actually, I don't know if he should be using this Decay, but, you know, maybe it's fine. He's burning the... Uh, the the charges plus he has his own mana stuff on the way raindrops plus a neutral item and more sentries you always need this kind of stuff as a support maybe he should have a clarity here i'm not sure why he doesn't perhaps it is the discussion in the team like hey we're not doing anything for at least a minute so just chill so it's like okay i'll just let the raindrop you know regen uh, tundra actually makes a play so he does try to come over to help uh use one of his sentries to check this cliff in a moment puts it down here where the enemy is less likely to check it uses the courier to go up uh I actually don't know if he should do this right now. Uh, this, again, might be some pro thing that goes beyond me. Uh, they're definitely way better, so uh, I, I don't know. But from a pub player perspective, I might wait on this. Definitely don't put the sentry up here, which is what he did not do, because they do have an observer, and then you're like, oh, well, they just watched me do that, and there's four heroes here, so I can't really de-ward anyways. Then they kill your sentry. It's sad. But he put his sentry down here. And if they put a sentry down, uh, they are pros, so they probably put theirs, like, further back here. Uh, it's unlikely it's on the cliff. Maybe it is. Um, but because of that, his sentry is more likely to survive, and he sends the courier to go check it. So it is, like, a cool thing. It's it's a little risky uh, for pubs. You know, probably okay either way. But he does not try to go save that... Uh, Primal Beast and does not try to get that D ward right now when he knows the enemy team is all in that area. He's just going to tell his team like, hey, it's there. Be careful. And notice he keeps his observer in the area. Maybe it could be a little more under tower, uh, but he's probably just assuming the enemy's not going to come in like this. And so that way, when he knows the area is safe, the courier just has to go from here to here, and then he can get it. It doesn't have to, like, send it all the way back. And be like, okay, come out here. Now i got to wait here for, like, 20 seconds while I wait for the courier to get out. So just a little bit of a time save for himself, allowing a more efficient movement. Pressuring mid again. Here's that Queen of Pain. Let's throw spells on her. Draw attention. Prevent her from going to the other side. Maybe we don't get kills, but uh medusa is farming we're pretty happy with that notice this sentry he pushed up with his team pushed off the queen of pain now he puts the sentry to check for vision in the area a lot of support players just blindly walk up on their own drop a sentry it's that same deal i was talking about here you find something and they saw you come up here on your own so they come and kill you uh so you need to assume they have vision there can i safely walk up there most of the time, the answer is no, especially in a hotly contested area like mid. So you got to wait for your team to actually be with you to safely, you know, check this side for observers or you need to see them somewhere else, things like that. It's a very common mistake. So I did want to highlight, you know, good play from him here. His team groups up to secure this mid tower and another opportunity for support players and why it's so good to have observers and sentries just in your inventory. You don't have to place them immediately as soon as you get them you do want some deep wards. Even if you're the defensive team, like one or two deep wards can still be very good. You just need to wait for the right opportunity. So four push up to the tower. The enemy's not contesting him. So they know it's a pretty good time. Uh, he's already up here. He knows he's safe. So he's going to go ahead and drop a deep ward right here. The enemy team may suspect it, but they don't know exactly where he placed it. So he's got this down. If the enemy was in this area, he's very safe. Everyone's around him. So this is a very good time to deep ward. I, I really encourage you all to have that habit. No matter who you're playing, doesn't really matter for undying specifically this is a nice play so it drops the sentry so that uh, he can check the cliff where he then puts the tombstone this tombstone is multi-purpose one it checks the cliff for any observers which you're not going to see in pubs by the way uh they took the tower pubs would not have warded here already the pro scene would identify that tower is going to fall in a minute let's ward up uh so you don't have to worry about that as much um Two, it helps you take Ancients. This is really good for Undying. The Tombstone is not usually enough to actually farm up a huge stack on your own, but especially if you have teammates who like would get killed by five stack of Ancients just hitting them, the Tombstone Zombies all like tank the hits for a little bit. Uh, so then you can farm it like this, whether you're stealing enemy stacks or just securing your own because Undying is one of the few melee heroes who can double stack on his own thanks to Decay. Uh, but then, uh, oh, you also need uh, level 2 decay, by the way, to do that, since the uh, base damage is 0 at level 1. But then 2, if the enemy knows you're stealing your stacks and they want to run, run in, this 
tombstone is acting like an observer and anyone who walks in will get hit by the tombstone or with the zombies uh so it's going to slow them down trying to get in here it's a bad time to fight and it's on the high ground so the enemy can't see it without using like some kind of spell shadow demon needs to be there or they need to put an observer or sentry it's just a very good placement so in team fights look for something like that uh if you can it's not always possible but it is really nice and if you're ever stealing ancients something like this or on this side something like up here excellent to do we're gonna wrap up with a cool play from liquid i mean other pro teams are doing it too this is something nice to push for in pub games i think if you need a general game plan uh notice this whole time undying hasn't really come top he is preemptively teleporting here this time because they saw the enemy team starting to move up here he's going to teleport to the outpost because he's coming first so he'll take the long one and that way if a fight does break out the team has the shorter teleports into the immediate fight area at the tower so good on him uh cool play there uh, but also, it's approaching 14 minutes. So actually, his team wants to fight and push in to this XP rune. As Undying, you love this kind of early stuff. So the more you can push your team towards this, hey, guys, uh, I want to fight. Like, I won my lane. Carry, please be okay. I'm going to go gank, right? Then off those ganks, hey, let's go push towers. Let's go for wisdom rune plays, things like that. You like this because the more heroes show up, the more decays, the more tombstones, uh, tombstone value you get. So the whole team comes up here, and then they actually go for, like, this baller relocate play straight into the Rune, and everyone just runs in this is a little dangerous for a pub game it, it would probably work as well because the enemy wouldn't rotate as quickly uh, it's a very cool pro play for yourself the much more realistic thing to happen as uh, undying is maybe you push up with some heroes here and then you walk here by yourself to try to get this this is probably what's gonna happen in a pub game we're gonna stop here for now because I think going forward the pro level coordination game plan and stuff like that goes beyond our pubs we're just gonna kind of like please go fight as a team follow along that kind of stuff uh, if you want me to cover it in the future let me know uh, for this we'll end with his itemization you you want your team to be active early so greaves uh, small items like pavis solar crest they can all be very good for you in this case he's getting holy locket which is actually not very popular at all on undying right now but I think it's really good because he has an IO and because he's playing with a less track Medusa. Uh, generally, you don't need it though. I would say go for like Greaves, uh, Ghost Scepter can be okay, like Pipe. You see his like types of items, right? It's like, hey, I want to group and that involves a lot of fighting. So whatever's going to help with that the most in this particular game. Um, generally, mana, pretty useful for Undying at the start. And then from there, kind of whatever. Um, those are really good to do. Thank you for watching. I hope that was helpful. Let me know who you would like us to watch and cover next. And I will see you there. Bye.